Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Leanna. Today I'm going to be starting a series of videos that I discussed that I was going to be doing. Um, and I'm going to be starting reviewing all of the Studio Ghibli movies chronologically. And today I'm starting with Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind. And this is the very first Hayao Miyazaki movie as well as the first Studio Ghibli movie. After each of these discussions, I'll also be doing a makeup look inspired by the movie posters. And I know that there's probably a few different movie posters for each of these films. So to keep it consistent, I'm just going by the movie poster I find on IMDb. So Miyazaki has always had a really strong advocacy for environmentalism and climate change. And you can see this throughout many of his movies, starting early off with Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind. In Nausicaa, approximately a thousand years have passed since the collapse of modern civilization, so all human beings are struggling to survive in this world. A toxic jungle has formed and it's inhabited by these really large insects and uh, the toxic jungle is expanding more and more each day and the jungle is inhabited by these spores. As the spores expand, People are having trouble to breathe, having trouble breathing, and essentially the entire jungle is poisonous to humans. Nausicaa and her mentor, Lord Yupa, who, if you watch the English version, is played by the wonderful Patrick Stewart, they seek to know the truth about the toxic jungle and whether it can be saved or if it will just keep expanding until it reaches their valley and consumes humanity as they know it. The opposing kingdom of Tolmikia wishes to burn the jungle and wipe out everything inside of it so that humans can once again reign supreme. Nosuka is one of the only ones who can see beyond the sometimes terrifying exterior of the giant insects in order to empathize with them, calm them, and return them to their home. Many of these insects are simply afraid of the humans and react out of that fear. The humans respond in kind, trying to exterminate them. We see this all too often in our own society with, in with innocent wildlife being wiped out because we're scared, because we perceive a threat, and sometimes just because we want to. Because we want to be the most powerful species on earth, and we want to exert that power rather than trying to live peacefully with our animal friends. This is what the Tolmikians want, but are warned against. They are warned that what caused nature to retaliate in the first place was human ego, selfishness, and oppression. It was humans who polluted the earth and created the toxic jungle in the first place. But the trees in the jungle are actually beginning to heal. As they grow larger, the air is actually getting cleaner. So burning the jungle would actually destroy humankind's uh, own hope at healing the earth. Similarly, we humans here in the real, in the real world uh, created our own toxic climate. We are continuing to destroy any hope of healing by consistently burning trees and pushing animal species to extinction. I find the ending to this movie particularly powerful as the Tolmikians utilize nature as a weapon. The way they hold hostage a baby Om, which is one of the more prevalent species in the movie, they injure it and use it to lure a larger herd of Om to the valley in order to cause mass destruction. Miyazaki is also strongly anti-war and his stance on this can be seen throughout the movie. It's worth pointing out that this movie was made at least 35 years ago and its themes are no less relevant today. In fact, they're probably more relevant than they were 35 years ago. But this movie has a hopeful ending and I always hope that there's something that we can do to heal the earth in time if we just work together. The character, creature, and architectural designs are definitely setting the tone for future Studio Ghibli and particularly Miyazaki movies. Some of the faces actually look eerily similar to uh, those that you would find in secondary characters in future movies. Some of the airships are very similar to those that you would see in the follow-up movie, Castle in the Sky. And if you look really closely, one of the creatures called a fox squirrel also makes an appearance in the Castle of Laputa. Nausicaa also kicked off the long-standing tradition of Miyazaki movies, having a young woman as the lead character. Not just a young woman, but one that was written very well, and which, as a young girl myself growing up with these movies, it had a strong impact on me. This isn't my favorite Miyazaki movie or Studio Ghibli movie, but that's only because the catalog is so rich with amazing movies overall. 
Um, but this is a wonderful introduction to Studio Ghibli with a strong message, a really good story, well-written characters, and beautiful animation that still holds up to this day, which is saying something because sometimes anime doesn't hold up this many years later. So now I'm going to take you through the tutorial I created for this look. If you want to see that, then just stick around. And if you want to call it quits here, that's fine too. I'm starting with this matte orange shade, which has a little bit of a yellow tone to it. And I'm using a fluffy brush to put that on my lower lid. I'm going to be doing sort of a gradient, and that's why I'm starting on the lower portion of my lid instead of in the crease like I normally do. Next I'm going to take another matte orange. This one's just slightly darker and a little bit more red toned, and I'm using the same fluffy brush. Just going to put that higher up on the lid, and I'm going to blend that into the lower lid. And the shade's going to go as high up as the crease, but not fully into the crease. Next I'm going to take this matte blue purple shade on a smaller fluffy brush. That's going to go directly into the crease, sort of the socket line. Just doing back and forth motions to blend that through. Next I'm taking this matte bright cobalt blue, once again on the bigger fluffy brush, taking that up into the transition area, so I'm sort of higher up on the brow bone. And because this overlaps with the blue purple shade that I just used, it's going to help blend that out even further as well, because right now it's looking kind of dark, kind of unblended, but this will help with that. For the lower lash line, I'm taking this really dark blackened green. It's kind of a satin shade, and I'm just going to put that all along the lower lash line. On the inner corner, I'm taking this metallic yellow gold shade on a domed brush, so that's going to go on the inner corner, and the inner lower lash line, and a little bit on the inner lid. I'm also using that same domed brush to pat on a little bit of a glitter duochrome shade on the lid. It's got a little bit of green, a little bit of pink. And I'm just going to finish up with a coat of mascara on each eye. And this is what the eyes are looking like up close. To finish off the rest of the face, I'm zooming out now and I'm going to put on some highlighter. This is just a white gold highlighter. I'm going to use a cream blush today. This is a mauve shade and I'm just going to use a thick, dense brush to blend that on all my cheeks. lipstick I'm going to be using a warm mauve brown. This is a cream formula so it's not going to be matte at all. And that's the completed look. So that's the tutorial and that's my little discussion I created for this one. I'm going to try and keep them fairly short so that I can combine both in one video, the discussion and the look. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to find other videos from me, you can look down below. And if you want to subscribe, there's a button where you can do so. If you don't want to, that's okay. I hope you're all staying safe and well and finding things to do right now while staying safe. And I'll try and make more videos like this soon. Of course, I'm going to go through the catalog chronologically. So next up will be Castle in the Sky, which is one of my favorites. So I'll see you soon. Bye, everyone.